Hi, and congratulations on your 2022 Nissan Rogue SL. This is an absolutely amazing vehicle that I know that you're gonna love. It's got the new drivetrain in it, a lot more power, but a lot better fuel efficiency as well. Ton of features on this, but we're gonna go back through that to help refresh your memory. This is why you bought the vehicle. Let's get you up to speed on your new vehicle. And at the end, if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can call, text, email, or stop into 60 Baker Drive with a Regan's Nissan here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Let's go back through and show you what you got, and then we'll go from there. We're gonna start right here at the infotainment system. We've got a beautiful nine inch full color touchscreen display. When I go up to my source, I can see I've got AM, FM, satellite radio, USB one and two, which are down here. USB one is a type C USB. It's used in a lot of the newer model phones and it will transfer data and charge faster. USB two is our traditional type A USB. Bluetooth is an option. And what we don't see here because they haven't been connected yet is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Once you've connected those, those will show up as options there as well. We're gonna back it here. Now to set up a phone, you're gonna go into settings, connections, and then you're gonna hit add new. Now before we do this, we're gonna go in here, make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And a relatively new feature for Nissan, which we're gonna turn on is to allow the use of two phones to be simultaneously connected so that you can take calls from either one. We're gonna back out of here. So again, hit the add new from there. On your phone, you wanna go into the settings and then into Bluetooth settings, and you're gonna look for My Rogue. Tap on My Rogue. Once you do that on the screen here, you'll see a message pop up with a number. You should get the same number pop up on your phone. Verify that the number is the same. Press pair. If you have an Apple phone, you're then gonna to need to press allow once. If you have an Android phone, you'll need to press allow twice. Once you do so, again, if you have an Android phone, especially if it's a Samsung and you have a lock screen on your phone, you're gonna to wanna to back out to the main setting screen on your phone, go down to lock screen, then you're gonna go into smart lock. You're gonna go into trusted devices and you're going to add a trusted device. That trusted device is gonna be my rogue. There's a chance that if you don't do that, when your phone locks, it will disconnect from the vehicle. So to avoid this, just go ahead and follow those steps. The fastest way to get back out of anything that you're in the settings for is simply gonna pre press the audio button, the menu button, or your map button, which will take you to your navigation system. We'll get into that in just a moment. We are gonna go back into the settings. Now, because this does have navigation, you can set your clock in here, or if it's set to auto, you really shouldn't have to do anything at all with it. If you ever need to make adjustments, feel free to go through and adjust it however you would like to do so. Again, we're gonna hop right back out to our audio. On the map screen, you are equipped with navigation and this does come with free updates. I have a separate video on how to do it either by USB or by Wi-Fi. When you're in the navigation to use this, we're gonna go into destination. From there, depending on where you're going, if you're looking for something that is outside of your area, you go into street address and start either with your state or province, if it's out of the state or province that you're in, or start with your city. If it's in your local area, just go into house number, punch in where you're looking for. The next thing it will ask is the city and it should auto populate with what you're looking for there. Once you've got it set, everything will pop up and you're good to go. If you're just looking for something close by, like a local coffee shop, or maybe you're looking for a gas station, just go into points of interest, pick what you're looking for. It's gonna start with what's closest, tap on that. You can see right there, it's setting the destination. And as soon as I hit start, it's gonna give me all the directions that I need to get there. Later on in this video, we are gonna go over how to do all of this by voice, because when you're driving, all of these options are gonna gray out because it is a distraction to try and set this while you're driving. Also on the map, everything is touch screen. You can zoom in or out here, or you can pinch it just to zoom in or out. It all works really nice and easy. Down below is our climate control. It is a tri-zone climate control in the SL trim level. This means that you have a whole separate climate control in the back for your passengers back there. As well, in the front, you can each set your own temperature. Right now everything is synced and I can see that my sync button is on over here and it tells me sync. Now, if I 
push the auto button. Typically what I recommend is find a temperature that you're comfortable with, push the auto button. Your airflow, as far as the speed and where it's going will automatically adjust itself. Anytime that you wanna manually adjust your fan speed, you can do so here, or you can adjust where your airflow is gonna go with these buttons down here. But as soon as I do that, auto is gonna turn back off. With the auto, it's gonna do what it has to to get me up or down to that temperature as fast as possible. And then it will do what it needs to just to maintain that temperature. So it makes it really nice and easy. Now, if you wanna control the rear, all you gotta do is hit the buttons here for rear. You can see I'm changing the temperature up or down there. Again, I can sync that just by hitting the button there. Rear defrost is right here, which will also activate your heated side mirrors. I've got my heated seats on the outside of my dials here, and there's high, medium, and low, as well as my heated steering wheel right here. When your air conditioning is on, you do want to make sure that you are using recycled air if it doesn't automatically go there. Now, our gear shift is a bit different. We're gonna be very careful in what we're doing because I do have another vehicle parked directly in front of me and the building directly behind me. But, right now where I'm in park, essentially to get the direction I wanna go. If I want reverse, I need to squeeze the thumb button and push towards the reverse. And I'm gonna disable my sound there for a moment but I can see right away, I've got somebody behind me and the building is right there, but because their foot is within the red, it was giving me that steady tone. And if I tried to move, it's gonna automatically hit the brakes because of the rear emergency braking, which we'll get into shortly. To get to neutral, because I'm in reverse, I've gotta come down to that neutral. So I'm gonna come down one click and hold, and now I'm in neutral. For drive, I'm just gonna pull down towards drive. And again, it is beeping, and a big part is because of that vehicle up in front of me. So again, I'm gonna disable the sound. It turns off the camera in the process. For park, all I gotta do is push the P. Now, if I'm in drive, again, we'll disable that. And I wanna get shifted down a couple of gears. There is some manual shifting involved to go with the paddle shifters on your steering wheel. You simply push down towards drive a second time and now I can see a number up here. Now I can use my paddle shifters to shift up or down. So if I'm coming down a large hill and I wanna shift down, I simply tap down a couple times to get to the gear that I want. Once I get to the bottom of the hill, I'm simply gonna pull down on this again and it goes back to drive again. So we're gonna go back into park and stick right where we're at. Now I do have an electronic parking brake and it is on at the moment, as I can see up here. To engage this, all you gotta do is pull up. That engages your parking brake. To disengage it, your foot does need to be on the brake. So if I keep my foot off the brake and I push down, it beeps and tells me press the brake pedal. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and again, I'm going to push down and it releases the parking brake. Now, because of where I'm at at the moment, I do wanna re-engage that. So I'm just gonna lift up on it and it re-engages the parking brake for me. Auto hold is a neat feature. So for this, I gotta buckle up and then I'm going to go into drive. And again, we're gonna be very careful in what we do here. We're gonna disable the sensor there. Now, you can't really see anything. I am gonna disable my parking brake and I'm gonna turn on auto hold. Now I can see I've got a green circle with an A and the word hold up here. So if I take my foot off the brake, despite being in drive, I'm not moving. And this is because my brake is held on for me. The moment I touch the gas, that's gonna turn white and the brake is gonna release immediately and I'm moving. Now I'm not going to do that at the moment because of the car in front of me. However, when I shift back into park, because the auto hold is on, it will automatically engage the parking brake. The last thing down here is our drive mode selector. Now by default, every time you turn your vehicle on, it's gonna be an auto, which is your normal starting point. I've got eco mode, sport mode, snow, snow mode, and off-road mode. And I point to all of those because we're now gonna watch the screen up here as I turn my dial. 
So as I turn it towards the right clockwise, I get to eco mode and it shows me up here so I don't need to be watching the dial while I do it. Eco mode is gonna get me better gas mileage, but just be aware that trying to pull away from a dead stop or trying to go out and around somebody in a hurry while you're in eco mode is gonna feel a little bit sluggish compared to your other modes. Sport mode on the other hand is if you're losing your passing lane and wanna get out and pass somebody in a hurry, flip it down to sport mode and you're gonna have some extra torque on the motor which is gonna give you all that boost that you need to get past somebody. Don't forget to take it back out of sport mode. It is harder on your gas. At that point, I'm typically for me, I'm gonna go back to auto. In the winter, which I'm hoping we're past at this point, we're gonna use snow mode if the roads are getting really bad. Snow mode is gonna make your all wheel drive system react a little bit different. So under normal circumstances in auto, eco mode or sport mode, your all wheel drive system is gonna kick in as it needs to. So pulling away from a dead stop, you're in all wheel drive. Once you get going, it drops down to front wheel. Any traction conditions at all will trigger the all wheel drive system to kick in automatically and it will do so up to 140 kilometers an hour with that system as soon as you get past those traction issues you drop back down to front wheel drive with snow mode it's still going to kick in the all wheel drive system automatically it's just going to do it a little sooner but it's going to hold it in a lot longer to ensure that you are well past those conditions it makes for a much safer drive on the way home and a lot more peace of mind our last mode down is off-road mode. With off-road mode, if you're on an old dirt road that's maybe had a lot of rain recently, there's some heavy mud, or maybe there's just a lot of sand, off-road mode is gonna kick in the all-wheel drive system almost immediately, and you're almost going to be exclusively in off-wheel, in uh, all-wheel drive mode. Once you get past those conditions, please make sure you take it back out of off-road mode. It is gonna be a little harder on your vehicle and because you're in all wheel drive so long, it is gonna be a little harder on your gas. On the right hand side of my steering wheel is the controls for my Bluetooth hands-free and my cruise control. We're gonna start with the Bluetooth. My phone will answer or hang up a call while my voice button here will allow me to make an outbound call. Now also, if you have an Apple phone, pressing and holding this for two seconds will access Siri. If you have an Android phone, pressing and holding, if it's so equipped, will access Hey Google. If I wanna set my navigation. So we're gonna go through and try and set the voice recognition using this button here. And there is a regular sequence to it. This one is just being a little difficult at the moment. So we're gonna attempt this. You say your select a command. Navigation. Navigation. Please say your select a command from the displayed list. Street address. Available commands are... So normally at this point, we would just go through and enter it. Street address. Please say the full street address. For example, 520 Chestnut Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 60 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Six zero Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Calculate route. Adjust location or change address. Calculate route. Calculating route. The route calculation is complete. Proceed to the nearest road. This route includes toll roads. And that's typically how we would go through and set the navigation while you're driving. Now this one's just being a little bit fussy at the moment, but it will work for you. All you gotta do is follow the prompts. Typically at the street address, you don't need to say it separate. You could simply say street address, 60 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, or whatever street address it is that you're trying to punch in. So we're gonna cancel out of here for the moment, and we're gonna head back over to our steering wheel. To set our cruise, we're gonna press the blue button here, and we'll see up here our screen changes, initially showing us our safety settings, and then going to our adaptive cruise screen, where by default, the very first time, it's set for three car lengths plus safe distance. You can adjust it using this button here, which will drop it to two or one or back up to three. Just as an example, one car length plus safe distance while doing 100 kilometers per hour is approximately two and a half car lengths between you and the vehicle in front of you. Now I'm gonna press my blue button here to turn this back off. If I just want normal cruise and I press and hold the blue button, 
I can see I lose the lines down here and I change to a dial up here. This means I now have just normal cruise. So I'm gonna turn that back off and go back to our adaptive cruise because with the adaptive cruise, you also get pro pilot assist with Navi assist. And again, I do have an entirely separate video on how all of that works in detail, showing all of the functionality on it. It is a very neat feature, but pro pilot, the gist of it is you set your adaptive cruise, it will maintain a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you. And then using the camera and the windshield, it's reading the lines on either side of you and it's gonna keep you centered in your lane. It helps steer with you. It's a very smooth system. Check out my other video for the details on that. It'll give you a really good overview on it. So we're gonna turn that back off and we're gonna go back over to the home screen, which we're about to get to. On the left side of my wheel, I've got all of the controls for my audio, which make it really easy to operate. There is a volume dial here, but I can increase or decrease the volume here. Using the two arrows down below, I can go through my presets, or if I'm streaming music from a thumb drive or my phone, I can skip tracks with those same two buttons. My OK, OK dial with the arrows beside it is to change the screens up here. So you have a really nice seven inch display up here. Our home screen has a lot of information on it. We've got a digital speedometer here to go with the analog speedometer got a compass at the top to show the direction that you're traveling and on the bottom we have our radio info and I can see I'm on preset 2. So as we saw the presets change over there again if I change it from the steering wheel I can see it all right here or even if I tap it over on the screen itself I can still see a change on this home screen here. Our next screen over to the right is going to give our fuel economy. Now we saw there, there was a couple of dots and now there's up and down arrows. This means that I can use my scroll dial right here to change the view of what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna scroll down and now I have a digital speedometer and my average speed. I'll scroll down one more time and this is the screen that's gonna be most important for a lot of people because on this screen here, I have my fuel economy, which we'll see is running very, very high because in four and a half hours, it's only gone 122 kilometers. There's been an awful lot of idling done on this vehicle. Also down below, I have my average speed. Now this one says auto refuel. This means that every time you gas up, this screen is gonna reset all four of these features. If you wanna manually track anything, simply push your okay dial in like so, and it changes to manual one. You can reset these ones manually by pressing and holding the OK dial, and then you can reset them all, or you can pick which of the four you wanna reset at any given point. When you press any of them, it's gonna ask you to confirm, simply say yes, and they all get reset. If I press my dial again, I have a second screen where I can manually alter any of them. And again, you can go through and do any of the ones that you like. One more push is gonna take me back to the auto refuel screen. You can reset this manually, but again, this is gonna reset every single time that you go through and fill up. Next screen to the right will allow me to monitor when I'm in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And traditionally, as you're in front wheel drive, your top line is gonna have 100% of your power. Anytime the all wheel drive kicks in, it could be up to a 50-50 split, and you'll see the two bars show up there. Now again, on the right-hand side of the screen, we've got our little up-down arrows, so we're gonna scroll down. And this is where we get a brand new screen for our variable compression turbo. You have a 1.5 liter, three-cylinder variable compression turbo. The variable compression means that there's a couple different things that the turbo is gonna do in terms of the compression rates. One of them is for your eco, and this is where you're gonna get your optimal gas mileage. As long as it, is, as it is below the zero, that's where you're gonna be in your eco compression zone. That's where you're gonna get your best gas mileage. As you give it some power, give it some gas, you'll see it will go above the zero, anywhere up to the 15 or as far as 30 PSI. That's where you're gonna get your real boost of power, but also keep in mind that as that bar travels up into the power zone, it is gonna be a little bit harder on gas. So be mindful of that because it's very easy 
to just want to push that pedal and get that power out of it and it is a lot of power a lot of fun to go through we're going to scroll down again and you have a tire pressure monitoring screen because of the tire pressure monitoring system on your vehicle once you start to drive it will show you all four wheels individually with the exact pressure of each wheel also on the axles in between each wheel it'll show you what they should be set for there is a six psi variance that is allowed before it will trigger a warning so for example if my front ones are supposed to be set for 36 if they go below 30 it will pop up with a warning telling me low tire pressure and it'll do this no matter what screen i'm on it's going to tell me which of the tires is low and what the exact pressure is now the beauty of this system is when you pull in somewhere that has an air pump, simply go to the pump, leave your vehicle running, grab the hose and go to the tire it says needs air and start putting air in. Once it gets up to the correct pressure, providing your vehicle is still running, it will beep the horn once to tell you to stop. If for some reason you kept putting air in or went to the wrong tire, there is an upper limit that it will hit. And when it hits the upper limit, it will beep the horn three times in a row. Please stop putting air in your tires. However, should this happen, we do ask that you start letting some air back out. And once it gets back down to the proper pressure, the horn will beep once to tell you to stop. If we scroll down again, we're back where we started. So we're gonna move over to the next screen, which is for our navigation system. On this screen, you get a picture of a vehicle and you see the direction that we're traveling. But if your navigation is set for a destination, this will change and you will get an arrow going either up to the right or up to the left, depending on the direction of your next turn or straight ahead for your destination. And it's gonna count down the distance for that as well on this screen. Our next screen to the right is simply for our audio. Now, whether you're on the home screen or this screen, if I press the okay dial, I can change the source of my audio right from here. So I can see right away it's changed there. It also changes over here. So I'm gonna do this again. And we can see without touching anything over here, I have total control of everything to do with my audio, all with the push of a thumb while I'm driving. My next screen to the right is for my safety shield and my adaptive cruise. So if I scroll down, I go back to another screen here for my speed limit sign. As I pass by a speed limit sign, it will post it on the screen here. Even if I'm not on this screen, it's still gonna post it up here as well so that you always know what the speed limit is where you're traveling. Just be mindful of that as you've lost all excuses if you're caught speeding. We'll scroll down again and then we get into our safety features. Your SL Rogue is equipped with Safety Shield 360. This is becoming standard from Nissan. What this means is you have automatic emergency braking with forward collision warning and it is predictive forward collision warning as well as pedestrian and bicycle detection. Your forward collision warning is something you will experience. And this means you're driving down the road, somebody's turning into a side street or a parking lot or a driveway somewhere ahead of you. And once the radar in the front of your vehicle gets within range and sees that you're going much faster than they are as they're doing roughly 10 around the turn, you may be doing 50 approaching them. The radar sees you're closing this gap. It will flash a warning on the screen here and it's gonna beep at you inside the vehicle. It is letting you know that unless something changes, there is a risk of a collision. The moment your foot is on the brake, that all goes away. Or the moment they round that turn, nothing else happens. You carry on as if it never happened. The automatic emergency braking would be the next step in that. So if you're driving along and the car in front of you piles on the brakes inside the vehicle, it'll recognize that you are closing this gap super fast. So it's going to beep at you. It'll flash the warning up on the screen. And that warning could be red or yellow, depending on how close you are. The gas pedal will then push back against your foot a little bit. And if you don't get across to the brake pedal fast enough, it will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision. The moment your foot is on the brakes, that entire system turns off as you're in total control of the vehicle. Your pedestrian and bicycle detection work the exact same way, only they're gonna happen even faster. The reason for this is it's looking for the shape of a human or a bicycle going past you. The car in front of you that hit the brakes still has some forward momentum. 
the pedestrian or cyclist who just came right out in front of you does not and hopefully we will avoid giving them any forward momentum. You have lane departure warning which is run through the camera up in the windshield up there. It's looking for the lines on either side of you while doing 60 kilometers an hour or higher. If it sees that you're starting to drift out of your lane using the haptic steering wheel it's going to vibrate the steering wheel. It's almost like hitting the rumble strips on the side of the road. If you signal beforehand, it's not going to do anything. It knows you are intentionally moving out of your lane. Blind spot indicators are run on the outsides of your mirrors. There is a triangle there that will turn a dull orange and stay lit up as long as part of a vehicle is in your blind spot. While that's lit up, so if, for example, my driver's side is lit up and while it's lit up, I signal to go left, that's going to start to flash and it will beep at me inside the vehicle here letting me know I need to have a look over my shoulder there is something in my blind spot. If despite that I still try and go left anyway the vehicle is going to very subtly tap the brakes on the right hand side of the vehicle to pull me back into my lane as this is blind spot intervention. I have rear cross traffic detection for when I'm backing out of a parking spot if there's anything coming at me from either side within approximately two car lengths it will beep at me inside the vehicle and whichever side that vehicle is approaching me from the blind spot indicator on that side will be flashing to let me know. Now I also have rear sonar and rear emergency braking. So we're going to have a look at the backup camera and I can hear beeping right away. This beeping means I am extremely close to an object and I'm going to make the beeping stop simply by pressing the OK dial. Once an object gets within the green hash marks it is going to start to beep at me. The closer I get to the object, as we saw earlier with somebody down in that red zone, the faster the beeping will get until you hit a steady tone. If you're still backing up at that point, the rear emergency braking is going to kick in, and at that point, it will stop you dead in your tracks. Now, when you press the button to turn off that rear sonar, as we can see here, it's also disabled my rear emergency braking. This is great if you're trying to attach a trailer or a bike hitch. That way everything allows you to still back up despite the sensors being there. The final safety thing that you do have is called high beam assist. And this is to go with your automatic headlights, you get automatic high beams as well. Now I'm gonna try and cover the sensors up here to see if we can trigger the headlights and my sensors for the lights right up here we'll make it dark my headlights come on automatically the green bullet down here means that my high beams are now automatic there is a couple ways that you can accidentally turn this off either by hitting the button on the end of your signal indicator or automatically triggering your high beams and then when you turn them back off high beam assist is off to turn it back on just push that button the green bullet shows back up. This means you don't need to do anything for your high beams. They will automatically come on and off as the camera in the windshield is looking for headlights and taillights. If it sees either one, it automatically turns off the high beams. If it doesn't see anything, they'll come right back on. And every time that they come on, that little blue light that you're used to will still show up there. That's our high beam assist. So we're gonna move that back off the sensor and turn our lights back off scroll down again and we're back to where we started there the next screen to the right is our settings there is a couple of settings i want to go through with you here to make sure that you're running on the optimal features for your vehicle so we're going to press our ok dial to go in vdc settings is where you would turn off your traction control if you wanted to we typically recommend against that as you are in an all-wheel drive vehicle with many different modes that you can drive in Driver assistance is where a lot of our safety features are housed. Steering assist is on right now, and that is our pro pilot system. If I go down to lane assist, this is your lane departure warning and intervention. So with this, you can turn either one on or off. Again, we typically recommend leaving them on. Blind spot is where you can turn on the warning or the intervention. And again, these are all safety features. We do recommend leaving them on. Emergency assist is for your automatic emergency braking in the front and the rear auto braking. The rear auto braking, this is where you're going to want to know to come in in case you are hooking up a trailer or a bike rack. You want to come in here and disable that. 
That way you are able to back up. Keep in mind that when you turn the vehicle off and then turn it back on, by default, this will automatically be back on. So you may need to turn it back off again when you go to do anything as you have something hooked up. Speed limit sign is on and this is where it will show up. Speed adjust by route is to do with your Navi Assist, which I do cover in the Pro Pilot, and you're gonna to wanna to set this to manual. The auto function is very neat. The only problem is as you pass by a speed limit sign for an off ramp, it will automatically readjust your speed when you're set to cruise to reduce, and you don't want it to automatically do that while you're still on the highway. So manual, it'll go through everything on that. It'll prompt you to reset it. Just leave it on manual. Again, check out my other video. It will go through all of that with you. Parking assist is for your moving object detection and your 360 camera and all of your sonar to go with that. Again, if you've got anything attached to the back, you're gonna to wanna to come down and turn off your rear sonar, possibly even your side sonar if you're turning into a parking spot in reverse. We're gonna come right back out of there and we're gonna go down to our vehicle settings. Now by default, Nissan vehicles will automatically unlock your doors when you turn the vehicle off. But if you come down to auto door unlock, you can set it so that the moment you shift into park, it will automatically unlock your door for you. We're also gonna check and make sure the wipers are set for speed dependent so that when they're on intermittent, you're driving around locally and They've got their delay on it. As you shift out to the highway and go to a higher speed, that delay will automatically reduce a little bit without having to do anything. Rear door alert is a neat little feature that it's more of a safety feature. When it's on, we do recommend that you set it for horn and alert. If you open the back door and put anything back there, and then when you get to your destination, you turn your vehicle off, you get out. If you don't open that back door up, your horn will start beeping at you to let you know that you forgot something. It will also pop up with a message here on the screen to tell you as well. Our maintenance, your oil control system is set right from Nissan. Because you have the variable compression turbo, it's set for 12,000 kilometers. And in a perfect environment, it would be every 12,000 kilometers or once a year that you would do your oil changes. However, what we recommend because we are in an extreme climate here is every six months or when your vehicle tells you. Your vehicle is monitoring your oil because of extreme conditions, which are deemed to be a lot of short trips in minus 10 or below, or a lot of short trips in plus 20 or above, and those are Celsius, is harder on your oil and this will tick down faster. So every six months or when your vehicle tells you is when you want to set for your oil changes. Your recommended maintenance is still every six months or every 8,000 kilometers. And it's all laid out in the owner's manual in section 10. It'll tell you what is recommended at each of those intervals. Customized display, I only change one thing in the main menu selection. I turn off our second one here, which is just a blank screen. I do like to leave everything else on. So you have lots of options there. Don't be afraid to play with your settings. As you saw on the bottom there, there is a factory reset. If need be, just hit that and then you can come right back through this video here and set everything back how you wanted it. So we're gonna go through a couple more things here. You do have an auto dimming rear view mirror. It's all set right there, so you don't need to do anything. We have a panoramic moonroof here and there's two buttons for this and an SOS button. The SOS button is exactly what it sounds like. Please don't hit that unless there is an emergency, it's gonna connect you to emergency services. But this button here is for my shade. Now, if I push it forward, it's gonna come up to this stanchion here, then it's gonna stop, and then I'm gonna push it forward again to make it come the rest of the way. I can stop it anywhere along the way simply by hitting the button. I'm gonna open that back up. As long as it's at least to the stanchion, I can then go through and operate my moonroof. So I can open or close it using this other button here, push up on it to tilt, forward to close it, or I can push back and it retracts down and in. And again, I can stop anywhere along the way or have it go the other way. I'm gonna open my shade here the rest of the way. 
on the left side of my door, I do have memory seats to go with the leather seating that you have. So for this, you're going to adjust your seat for about a solid week every time that you get into it for the first week. Every time that you get your seat and your side mirrors where you want them, press set and then seat one. And right there it shows you that it's all been set. The next time that you get in, you make any adjustments, just do the exact same thing. Once you've finally found your sweet spot, when somebody else has been driving your vehicle, whether it's a service technician or a friend or spouse, whatever the case may be, when you go to get back in, sorry, could you say that again? Hmm. Simply hit the button. I'm having trouble hearing you. And it's going to set you back where you want to be. That'll take you back to your setting for your seat and your side mirrors. Down below here, I can see I do have a button for power lift gate, and there is motion activation with this. We're going to go around the back in just a moment to see that. My key fob, because it is a push button ignition, has a key fob. There is a battery inside of my key fob. The battery is typically good for two to four years. When your battery starts to get low, your very first indication is you'll hop in, put your foot on the brake, hit the button, and it'll pop up here and say incorrect key ID. Don't worry about it, let the message go away, do it again. You still have the key with you, it just means it's time to think about changing that battery. If you hit the point that your battery is extremely low or dead, on the inside there is a key for the driver's side door to get in the vehicle. Once you get in, Take your key fob with the Nissan emblem, with your foot on the brake, use that to push your start button in. It will still start your vehicle even though the key fob is dead. To switch your battery, we're going to take the key out. Just get a flathead or something into one of those two little recessed areas, give it a twist, this will pop right open. The battery inside looks like a watch battery, just a little bit bigger. There is a number written on the inside of the casing, most likely going to be a CR2032. Just double check that that's the number, or the number on the battery should be the exact same. That is your battery size. It's about $7.50 or $8 to buy one yourself, do it yourself, or you can come to the dealership and they'll do it all for you for a little bit more. Once you get the new battery in there, clip it back together, put your key right back in place, and then you are good to go. Everything clips together nice and easy. On your key fob, you do have a panic button, a button for your power lift gate, unlock, lock, and then to work your remote start, you're gonna press lock, lock, press and hold this top button for five full seconds. It will remote start your vehicle from up to 200 feet away. From there, it's gonna run for up to 10 minutes. When you get in, it'll tell you right up here on the screen the exact same as if it wasn't running, Put your foot on the brake, push the start button. That engages your vehicle. If you get in and try and drive without engaging it by putting your foot on the brake and grabbing the gear shift, it will turn the vehicle right back off on you. So don't forget to do that. You can remote start it twice without ever getting in, or you can remote start it and then have one extension by doing the exact same thing. But after that, in order to remote start, again, you do need to get the vehicle up to 30 kilometers an hour, which resets that system and allows you to use it again. If you do add an extension, it will add 10 minutes to wherever you're at in the count. So if you've been running for seven minutes and you do it, you'll have a grand total of 17 minutes. If you try and cheat the system and do the remote start and then do it again right away, you'll get a grand total of 11 minutes. So don't forget to do that properly. Here in the back seat, I can see you now the vehicle is currently turned off. However, I've got heated rear seats in the back with high, medium, and low. A couple more USB ports. Now you see a lightning bolt on this. This means that these are strictly for charging where the ones in the front will interact with the vehicle. Also, I can adjust my temperature right here for the rear climate. So where it is tri-zone climate control, not quite the same as in the Platinum, but it does give me the option to set the temperature back here as well. A couple last items from the outside of the vehicle here. You do have an intelligent key system, which is a button on all four of your doors to lock or unlock the vehicle. One push because I just got out. I hear two beeps. I see two flashes up here. That means that my whole vehicle is locked. If you have the key fob on you, this works. It needs to be within approximately three feet. One push is a single beep, single flash. That means just the door that you're at is unlocked. A second push means the entire thing is unlocked. And there's one of those on all four doors as well. There is 
one of those buttons right in here and it's just a little round button here that does the exact same thing now i mentioned that there is a power lift gate i can push that button in there i can press and hold the button here or if i give a kick straight in and out underneath the license plate area it will open my hatch where i see i do have the divide and hide system that's only in the sl and the platinum now i've got two buttons up here this one will close the hatch i'm going to stop it there if i want to set it so that the height is not all the way up in case i have a parking garage that won't allow that set the height where you want manually press and hold Those two beeps mean that this is now as far as that hatch will open. I'm gonna manually push this the rest of the way back up and do the same thing to reset it. I can do the same thing to close it with that nice kicking motion just in and out underneath this area here. Or if I push the lock button, it will close the hatch and lock the vehicle all at once so I don't need to worry about it and I can be walking away as I'm doing so. Congratulations again on your 2022 Nissan Rogue SL. As you saw, this is a very, very feature rich vehicle. Tons of fun to drive, a lot of power, great fuel efficiency, and no shortage of features as well as safety features. But if you still have any questions about your vehicle, please don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact info is about to immediately follow. And you can reach out to me by call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. We're going to do everything that we can to answer all of your questions for you. And make sure that you're enjoying your Rogue to the fullest extent. I look forward to seeing you when you're in for your regularly scheduled maintenance or when it's time for your next vehicle.